Okay, so after that little speed bump, uh, I have to log in with a real account. So this is an account that is real. Uh, it's one of these business accounts. So um, the last thing that I was saying was in the biography. So in this account, for example, uh, this is the one I showed earlier. I'm logged into it. I have the company logo. I have a little bit of text, what, what this is, social media, web design, and more, and then an active link to the website. Number of posts, followers, following, etc. Um, huh, I noticed that this shows it also a little bit different in that the bookmark tab a moment ago was at the top. Now for this account, it's showing it down here. Maybe because that other one that I showed a moment ago was a brand new account I created, and this one I've had it for a couple of years, so it's got the old interface or something. Yes, that's what mine looks like mm. when I just created it. So you've got the bookmark at the top? Um, my screen looks just like that. I, I was missing, there was something above the, um, above the profile picture mm -hmm. on your previous screen that it was not, I did not have, and it had the bookmark on the icon. Mm. And I didn't understand why I didn't have it, but I just. Yeah, it might be in different spots for different people. I don't know, just for myself, I saw that move to be in two different places. Not exactly sure, but this is what I said for previous network that perhaps the company is doing A, B testing to figure out what works best. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, that's bookmarks. Um, you can uh, look at that on your own. Then we've got the icon. Uh, then we've got archive. Uh, this is sort of a way to hide your photos. You don't want to delete your photo, but you don't want it to be visible. You can archive your own photo. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And you, I don't really find too much of a of a reason to do that for a business, but you could. You don't want that photo visible to people anymore. You archive it. I suppose what you could do is if you've got a photo that's like some sort of coupon, uh, you can archive it, and then you can activate it again later if you've got the coupon offer again. So bookmarks, archives, hide your posts to show again later. Next to that, you've got invite friends. So add your friends from other networks. Um, when you archive, can, can you demonstrate how that works? Uh, in a moment, after we start sharing something, let's say we haven't talked about sharing yet, but then after we share something, we'll talk about archiving. And then after that, we've got these three buttons here. This this is the options menu. This is something for you to look at on your own, but if you um, click those three icons on the top right there, this is the part about inviting friends, about setting your settings for your account, changing your password, all of that stuff. So you can look at that on your own. Changing the language uh, of your account, uh, upload quality, all of that. You can look at that on your own. It's pretty self-explanatory. Oh, there's the blog there as well. And then at the very, very end, there's log out. And somewhere here also, there's delete account. So those are the options which are found on that little three dot menu under your account. When you click invite Facebook friends, are those people that have Instagram already or are they not on Instagram? It's going to be both. If they've already got Instagram, inviting them will connect you pretty quickly. If they don't have Instagram, they'll get a message that says, why not join us on Instagram? No, it should be in the user. If you go to the account with the icon up here, this icon here, if you go to the user icon, it should be on that. Can be that this little thing is nine? Let's see. On some, on some, it looks like it's on iPhones. It looks like it might be like a little gear. It kind of looks like a little circular round sun icon, but it's 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 that icon. So options, Android, three dots, iPhone, gear. Check options for your account. 
Yes. On Instagram, your information is visible for everybody. Mm -hmm. It would be setting the the phone number and everything. For the phone number, I think there's an option that you first have to approve to be found by a phone number. But they can find you by your name and the content that you share, definitely. The phone number, I have to double check, but probably and also. When you appear and then uh, touch the setting. This is settings, yes. setting there is a lot of information about you. Yes. All of them are visible for everybody? Yes, mostly. That's why uh, the people the problem people have is that it is so much public unless you change it. The default usually is that these things are pretty public. Okay, you can put everyone people who follow and all. Yes. And you can uh, you can set your settings for privacy how you like it. All right, let's uh, talk about sharing content, actually using it. Um, this account, again, I already have stuff here, so I would have liked to have done it on an account that has nothing, but uh, you know, kind of assume that that is empty. So the way I would uh, use this, either on the home screen, right, the home icon, there, is, and there should be an icon for the camera, or on almost any other screen, you should still have the icon there in the middle to share. It may be a different kind of icon depending on your operating system, but most likely that icon there is share. If I click on that, you may have various other options. In my case, the last thing that it remembered was to look inside of my phone's gallery. You remember gallery. It may directly go to take a photo for you. It may also be automatically on the selfie cam. So if it's not exactly like mine is, you can figure it out. You see at the bottom, most likely you will see gallery, photo, or video. I'm going to try a regular old photo first. Yes? Well, you either, on the home screen, click on the camera at the top there, or the icon that is on the bottom of the rows here, you click on the middle icon. So when you say share, you mean po post, because if, I'm confused because on Facebook, if you share, it means you take someone else's information and post it. Yeah, some of this terminology is kind of um, not as specific as, as it could be, but Facebook has decided to use the word share sort of in the wrong way, but everyone uses Facebook, so they think it's the right way. Share is simply to post. Facebook should be calling it a reshare. You're taking someone else's stuff and you're resharing it to s more people. But most networks, you would say, I'm going to share something, I'm going to post something original. Can you reshare on Instagram? Not really the same way. You can reshare it individually. I found someone's cool post and I'm going to share it or reshare it individually to seven people, not to all of my followers. And I have to choose each one of those seven people. So the resharing isn't that good or important on Instagram. It really is much more about original content. Unless you do like a snapshot and then post yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, so I've got here, uh, I'm going to give try it first with a photo. If, if you, whatever you're looking at here, I'm in photo mode. And what it shows is obviously, you know, where my camera's pointing at. I'm going to take a really artistic photo of the projector right there. So I'm going to uh, tap one time and that We'll snap the picture. Take my photo of that. Instagram, uh, originally the Insta is instant. And gram, like photogram, photograph, Polaroid, instant photo, Instagram. So um, this was the original way that you would use Instagram. You, at the moment, spur of the moment, you take a photo of your thing, you do filters and such, like I'll show you, you share it. Eventually then, it allowed us to do the load a photo you already had. So it wasn't instant anymore. You could have taken the time to take a great photo yesterday, and then today, go to the gallery to choose the photo. 
when you when you take the photo at that moment live this is when it's gonna be the square photo the rectangular photos and such are usually coming from going to the gallery because I've taken it with my regular camera which is rectangular and then I'm loading it from the gallery and it'll be rectangular I'll show that in a moment let's say I'm gonna take a photo of the projector click on that then this is where the fun part of it is uh, where the original style of Instagram was to choose a filter. At the very top I have this little sun icon. I, I think it's called Lux. This little sun icon is often a really great icon to use to make your photos look extra nice. All of these filters can be added or removed or combined. So for example, give it a try. And if, if you're using this on your real account, you can delete this photo. I'll show you how to delete the photo. Let's say I'm taking a photo of the projector, and I click the Lux icon at the top. Most of these are going to have some sort of slider for the effect. 0% strength, 100% strength. Lux went to 50%. If I tap and hold for a moment, the photo, it turns off the effect. If I let it go, it turns it back on before and after. So if I increase the effect all the way, that's how it'll look. How did it look before? I can tap it for a moment to see before and after. So Lux is a way to quickly kind of brighten the image, give it contrast, make it look pretty nice. You can go down all the way to like 5% effect. Usually, you know, increments of 25 will give you visible or tangible results. I'm not going to see much of a difference between 13 and 15, but I'm going to see a difference between 25 and 50, or I guess even 10% at a time. A difference between 13% and 23% will probably be more visible, but between 13 and 16, you're not going to see differences. So whatever kind of amount that you like here, you can do it. You can turn it on and off, preview it, more contrast, that's one possible filter. You can add this plus more, but for the moment I'll cancel it. This is one possible filter, but I'm going to cancel it. The other filters are over here. These are presets with these weird names that don't make, that don't have any meaning, but they are different effects. Normal as shot, Clarendon effect, if I tap it, it's going to go towards a bluish tone. Again, my dad would hate this. Why is the photo wrong? No, I want it to be blue because I want it to have the effect of nighttime or cold or whatever style. And again, I can tap and hold for a moment to see what it looked like before and after. We have all of these ones. There's moon. It's a version of black and white. There's other black and white ones. What's that? I don't see that at all here. Well, it depends on the camera. Some cameras uh, just let you tap the photo and it takes it and some have an icon of a little like shutter. Yeah. So it depends. So you have a bunch of these filters. Um, 
you know, different effects. This one gets like higher contrast, yellowish. There's like Inkwell, which is a different version of black and white. There's one called Hefe. This one kind of does a vignette where the edges are kind of dark. So you can do any of these filters or none of them. None. And that's perfectly fine. There's no right or wrong answer. Although, like I said previously, the original style of Instagram was square photos with a cool filter or a weird filter. That was the original style. You don't have to do that style. You can do anything you want now. You can also, if you're not satisfied with one of the presets, check it out over here. A filter that is already pre-created, or you can edit your photo in a very specific way. So I'm going to take it back to normal for a moment and click edit. Then I have a way to adjust it, such as rotating it, affecting only the brightness, the contrast, the colors, and you can swipe over to see more here, saturation, etc. So I can click on adjust, and then we've got rotate the image. I can push this over here to, to you know, rotate it, go to the other side, rotate. I can go into contrast and again increase the contrast all the way, whatever. And each one of these that I choose to use, if I turn on brightness and I put that maximum and I click OK, that will be added to more. So if, if I want really bright and I click done, it shows you've got brightness active. So you can build, you can stack all of these effects onto one photo. For example, I want a lot of brightness. I also want to change the warmth moving it to the right, to the left. I want lots of brightness, lots of warmth. I want to go, I don't know, to, to the shadows and play with shadows, brighten the shadows, darken the shadows. So it's up to you what you like. I've added three effects in total. There's no easy way to turn them all off. If you added three effects and you want to turn off effects, you have to go back to each effect individually and put them back to zero. There's no easy reset. So there's so much that you can do here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click discard to start over. Because what I want to show is one of the coolest things to do here, again, with focus. In the edit, at the very end, all the way to the right, tilt shift. We should call it focus. Tilt shift. This is a really cool effect. Again, I want to focus so that only this is in focus and outside of it is out of focus. For artistic purposes, that's what I want. The way we would do that is with the tilt shift. If I click on that, okay, no special focus, radial focus, linear focus. The radial focus, a little circle, will be basically, I'm going to put a circle on this and everything outside of the circle will be blurred. Linear is I'm going to put a rectangle on something, and outside of the rectangle will be blurred. This one will work well with radial because I want to put a spotlight on this, and outside is blurry. Linear would work great, like, let's say, in a group of people. Let's say there's rows of people. Three people here, three people here, three people here. Linear would be that I make a rectangle around the people in the center row, and outside of the rectangle, the people are blurry. Radial will be I focus it on one person's head, and everyone else outside of that circle is blurry. You can play with both, but I'm going to try radial. I tap on that one, and for a moment, did you see a little... So I'm going to turn it off, and I turn it on again. A circle appears. That circle can be moved. You don't see it but it's there, but then you tap and hold and move. And look at that, I'm moving the little circle to put it exactly what I want to focus. This stuff out here is trying to get out of focus. The purpose of focusing on, in film or video artistically, again, is to focus your attention on something. What's out of focus is out of, uh, out of, out of mind. What's in focus is in your mind. For example, if I wanted to, I can focus it on this speaker right here on the top right, and now what's outside of it is on focus. This spotlight can be grown or shrunk. Right now it's a certain size. If I use the two-finger pinch or unpinch, I can grow it 
or shrink it. I can make it really small. So see there, I'm, I'm putting it into a small spot on the object. I pinched to make it really small. And so now this is the most focused, and outside of that is less focused, a little to the edge, very unfocused. For the example of the uh, linear focus, let me take a, a quick class photo right here, just because I need an example. I won't share it, don't worry. Let's say I take the photo right here. So everyone's in focus. I go to edit and I go to tilt shift and I go to linear. So you see a rectangle appeared. I can move the rectangle. So I would then focus everything, everyone in that area to be fo to be in focus. And outside of that spot, you're out of focus. I come to the front over here. I put the rectangle here, and these things are in focus. Well, I took it at a bit of an angle because your tables are at an angle. You can change that as well. Right now it's totally horizontal, but with two fingers I can use it to tilt it and also to grow it or shrink it. So with two fingers I'm going to move it over here that the back row, you guys will be in focus. And so everyone else is out of focus. I can add that filter and then I can go back and then add brightness warmth. Look at that. So the original photo was kind of bluish and cold and now here and, and in focus. Now I've done selective focus. I can even go in and add lux to that before and after. There's my photo. Okay, so eventually once you like your photo, uh, then at the top right corner you can click Next. At the bottom you can send this photo, when you send it to Instagram, you can also send it or share it to Facebook, to Twitter, or to Tumblr. There also used to be an icon of Flickr. Now they took it away. I also have. I'm also on the other network, Flickr. I would love. I used to love putting my photos on Instagram and also putting them on Flickr. They took it away. So here you can also send it to Twitter. The problem with Twitter is in the old days you used to share your photo to Instagram and Twitter, and on Twitter it would show you the photo. Now it shows you the link to the photo on Instagram. So if it goes over to Twitter, it just says your description and the link back to Instagram. It doesn't show the photo anymore. But guess what? It works perfectly on Facebook because it's the Facebook parent company. From this screen, I send it to all my followers. Not really send it, but all my followers could see it if they log in and check their home screen. They would see my photo. The default is public to all who might follow me or anyone who might find me on search. The opposite is direct. If I select direct, this is where I choose to send it to certain people that I am connected to. Not every, not any random person on Instagram, only those that I've connected with first. So I'd have to select all of these people to connect to, to send it to them. It's not going to be public. Let's say we're going to make this public to everyone. We've got a spot for a caption. This is a spot where you can write text as much as you want. There's no limit like Twitter, as much as what that photo is, and also hashtags. So I could say here, um, education, 
is important. Hashtag school. As I start um, writing a hashtag, I start with the hash symbol, I start writing a hashtag, it's going to pop up. If you use this hashtag, 13,000 other people on Instagram have used it. So it's not really an important hashtag. Remember, there's 500 million users on Instagram. School hashtag has got 34 million using it. That's a much more po popular hashtag. Schoolgirl, school. I'll say school. So now the hashtag of school is part of my post. Others that have used that hashtag will also be connected. And if people search that hashtag, they can find me. Not necessarily by using the word education. So it is the hashtags that will help you get found more than regular text. And again, as I said, uh, okay, school, student, class, test, don't put 40 hashtags because you want to be found even more. Twitter or Instagram will really only count the first 30 hashtags, but don't do 30 hashtags. Don't do 20. Don't do 10 hashtags. Like I said, two to three, maybe five. If you do too many hashtags, you're looking like a spammer. Who knows if I get eventually Instagram will change their algorithm like Facebook, that too many hashtags hurt you. Right now, to be safe, I'm saying two to three, two to five, one to five. If one hashtag is enough, that's fine. Um, what else could we do here? School, hashtag school, hashtag education. You said the word education, but you're not really going to get found by it. If I do the hashtag education, this one has 5 million point seven users. So I can use that one. This is the only way, really, where that searching, when the question you uh, was asked earlier about, can I search only San Diego? Only if the person themselves have, has chosen to add a location. And here, in my case, it suggests, it recognizes these um, location nears by, which I don't really think Monrovia, California is near to us, but it's suggesting Monrovia, California. Mimi's Cafe, McDonald's, Black Angus Steakhouse. So these are locations that it's finding in the area, or you can click that search there also to find a location. So the, the location search in Instagram is not that good. Don't, don't really, don't bother with it too much. They need to improve it. You can attach a location if it's at your business, and if people search, that's good. I remember in the beginning, the, the the searching of localities in Instagram was a lot better. The problem was that people were starting to get harassed and stalked when they were posting their location on Instagram. So they then decided to really decrease the power and the usage of the usefulness of searching on locations on Instagram. Mm -hmm. How did you reach this page? This page is uh, if you if you do the search and search for the account called the VMCINK. That way you can follow to search this account. Now, if I want to send a picture the same as you got sent, share me, I cannot do it? But what do you mean, same as, same as me? I mean, this, yeah, share to, share, following, direct. Mm -hmm. I can't find it. Uh, I can't find it. Well, that's clicking the camera button. Click your camera button. That's how you share. I take a picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, this whole point of what I'm talking about is you, you should have taken a picture and it'll show you the screen. This is not any hard screen to get to. After you click on the, the camera to share a photo, it will take you to the screen. My system has crashed here, so... Let me 
Let me see if I can get this back online. This then I'm going to share it publicly to the followers. I'll just click that share button at the top. This account has, has a, a few followers, so in theory, when they log in, they will see this. They can then do these actions down here. My followers could see these buttons, they could like the photo. They can comment on the photo. They can share it directly to their followers. This is the closest to that retweet or reshare. Or you can, or they can bookmark it, you know, saving it privately for themselves. I would see that also on different on these different accounts. So I mentioned Chuck last week, how he's on uh, Pinterest doing very well. He's also there. Uh, so this projector is really dark, but Chuck is sitting right there. And he's working on a triple monitor setup, really showing off. And uh, he's doing web design work. And I have the option here. This account is following that account. I have the option to like his post, comment on it, share it to my followers directly, or bookmark it. So he's in Moshe 13. He said, working on a new feature for users. So that's his text. Then he also added the hashtags. Dev mode, web developer, Friday fun, emoji. You can actually use emoji as well in your hashtags, which is something, I think this is the only network you can do that. So you put Friday fun day with the little sun emoji. Oh, we can save some pictures on our desktop. Um, that's a complicated question because how how are you going to save a picture from your de from your phone to your desktop is a thing I cannot answer because I don't sure, know what kind of phone you have. Easy, I know, but how can I save these pictures on my cell phone? How to save someone else's picture on your yeah. cell phone? Uh, they don't really allow that because it's their picture. Although you can take a screenshot if you know how to take a screenshot on your I phone. Cannot save this picture. No. You can bookmark it. Yeah, but he's asking how to save it to his phone. Right? You want to save it to your phone? Yeah. Yeah, they don't let you. Uh, that's one of the things that Instagram doesn't let you for. They will not let. Exactly. It might be a good photo that I want to use, but they don't let it because it's someone else's property. The closest is you can bookmark it, but that keeps it inside of Instagram. It doesn't let you save it for yourself. Now, for my own photos, in this account, let me get back to the question earlier about archiving. Uh, this is the photo that I shared as part of this account. Uh, I have the actions here that for my own photo I can do these things. I suppose I could like my own photo, but that's gauche. I can also comment on my own photo, I suppose, and share my own photo to people, and bookmark my own photo. You can do that to your own photos, I guess. But depending on your device, on the Android, I've got icons, the three dots above the photo. Maybe on the iPhone, you've got that little gear icon below the photo, but somewhere on your photo, you have some, uh, you have some sort of options button for your photo. Also for other people's photos, but for your photo, you've got options, which you can click, and in there you'll see options such as Go back to edit my photo, I misspelled something. Something you can't do on Twitter. Once you tweet, your mistake, it's out there. You can delete it. Whoops, I should not have shared that, so I can delete it. Share it so that I can send it off to other networks like on email or Facebook and that sort of thing. By, in, by default, anyone can comment on my posts. 
this again goes back to if you have anyone being able to comment on your content, then you might open yourself up to bad comments, negative comments, spam, etc. You have the ability on a case-by-case -case basis to turn off comments, or in the main settings of the account, there is a way to turn it off for everything at once. Can you archive something? Yes. Um, you would have to go through the steps of you first archive it here, and then you go over to your user screen, go look at everything you've archived uh, up here, and then unarchive it there. So archiving it, it just does it. It doesn't even confirm it. So whoops, okay, maybe I shouldn't have archived it. Archiving it again is not like, it, it doesn't delete it. You can bring it back, but it sort of hides it. To bring it back, I go back to my user account, I go back to this like backwards time clock thing, that's their icon. Again, how do you how do you represent archiving something as an icon? I would have thought maybe a stack of folders. I think that's an archive, but here they have like a little backwards time machine sort of thing. In there, I see what I've archived. Only you can see posts you've archived. I can go back to it, and then I have the option to uh, show on profile. They don't even call it unarchive. Now they say, show it on my profile again. So when you show it on your profile again, does that mean it reposts it to the public again? Or is it just uh, your personal? That's a good question. I don't think it's going to go back to the public as if it was a new post to people. OK, because you were thing. saying that if you had a sale, that you could archive it and then pull it back up again. But it wouldn't really work if no one's really going to see it again, unless they go to your page. You know, I just checked it. Well, definitely if they go to your page, yes. But I just checked it right now, and it did appear at the top again. You know, at a, a moment ago, it was it was on top of one of these photos. And now that I've unarchived it, it seemed to have gone to the top again. So maybe it does send it to the top. I think it needs more testing, or maybe somewhere in the help it'll explain it. So it looks like it did go to the top. I'm going to get back to the share. I shared a moment ago a photo. I have the option. Oops. Let me start this up again. I have the option for um, sharing a regular photo or video. So the option of uh, sharing a, a photo or a video. If I switch over to video, well, it makes sense that I'm going to record a video. It says tap and hold to record. Now, what's different here about um, thinking in terms of video, there's a, there's a little icon here. It doesn't really make sense until you do it. Nothing has been recorded so far. As the longer that I record, this little bar will increase. You have a minimum amount of time right there, which is like, 16 seconds or something. And I think the maximum is about two minutes. So you have the ability to turn on the recorder and, and let's say what I'm doing is, let's say I'm going to also flip it around if I click on the little icon here to flip. So if I tap and hold it, right now I'm recording so I might say hello everyone thank you for subscribing to my real estate channel we're going to talk today about top 10 tips of uh, real estate and I let it go. So I recorded a few seconds and that's a video I'm going to share. Well, okay, that's that makes sense. But I can then uh, switch the camera uh, to a different perspective and then record a little bit more. So let's say I change myself standing over here now. So then I, I start to record again. Okay, so over here I'm going to show you the top 10 steps. Over here, make sure you do this and that. I'm going to let it go. 
I'm going to switch positions and start recording again. Every time that I stop and start the recorder, now I'm at another spot over here, and behind the scenes I can show you the mansion that's on sale. Mm -hmm. So notice here it's showing you recorded some amount of time, then you switched views for some amount of time, then you switched for another amount of time. So you can build up different views. You can just start and stop your recording, and all of that will be cut together as one video. What if you don't like one particular spot you were in? Can you go back and change that? At the moment that you're recording it, you have the delete button to, re to delete the last portion of it. But you can't easily go back to a part in the middle. You have to press delete again, and now I've deleted that part where I can go back to delete that part. So at the moment, if I've got seven pieces, I cannot go back to piece two. I have to delete all those pieces back to piece two. So maybe eventually they'll give us the ability to do more powerful video editing. For the moment, it's basically in stops and starts. So let's say... So one of the tip tips that I give you as a writer is you've got to use your favorite pen. I'll stop that and I'll say a writer also needs a good paper to write on so I recommend this kind of paper. And I'll say over here. Don't forget to back up your work because when you're writing and you lose it all you have to start over so save it up, save it on a flash drive. When you're doing videos on this part, can you uh, do the filters on your face? Yes, um, you'll be able to add filters to the video, each uh, each each portion of the video. Can you demonstrate that? Yeah, I'm still still doing it. Yep. Okay. So I'm recording these different segments, and then uh, once I've got the segments together, once I I don't have to fill up that bar of two minutes, I can do something short and then I go next. So on this next screen, this is where it's going to allow me to put the filters. So I've got a video so far. To press play. Okay, so I've got these different video clips. And then I've got the ability to add the filters. This is a little limiting in that I can choose This is a little limiting in that I can choose the filters, but not for each section. So I want it to have lo-fi on one section and inkwell on another. It doesn't let me do that. It only lets me choose one filter for the whole video clip. And it doesn't let you do like the dog ears and stuff like that on this one? No, on that mm -hmm. one, no. So that's only for the 24-hour one? No, um, not for the, yes, the stories. Yeah. Stories. That's that's the one where, uh, definitely on stories, maybe on a regular photo as well. I haven't looked at that as much as I should, but uh, yeah, it doesn't let you do all of the features on every aspect. So let's just say I'm going to choose something, I don't know, X-Pro or something, and... Um, it gives it an effect. Uh, I then have here cover. This is like a little preview thumbnail of what this video is before a person clicks play. If I don't pick a cover, it might pick a random part of the video that is not that flattering or interesting. So if you choose cover, you can scrub or browse through your video to find a, a frame that would look nice as like the preview image of your video. So it's on your cover, and then I kind of browse around a little, and I see that's the preview graphic. So if I did take a moment at the end of the video to like stop and to look at myself and smile, I would be able to then find it in here and, and grab the part where I'm smiling so that I can have that as the as the little preview icon. And then I can click next. And it's got these items to share like we've seen before. 
also send it to these networks, also attach it to a location, send it to all the followers or directly to certain people. What's your description and hashtag? So here um, I can say writing writing prompts or just writing how to think about it in terms also for these hashtags keywords what are people searching for what do people need a lot of what social media is marketing is is finding out what people need and how to get it to them so I, I have a dog walking business. I need to find people that need a dog walker. So if I put hashtags dogs, dog walking, dog sitter, pet sitter, these are what people are searching for, especially if they need something. Remember, hashtags have no spaces or special characters, so how to would be one word. Obviously, I'm not really doing any sort of how to or anything, but just as an example, I can then share. video takes longer to process and to upload and it takes up more of your data on your plan so Verizon, AT&T, whatever, it may take up more That cover image will then display when people are browsing, and then if they click play, if they choose to play, then it'll show this. Um, on this share part, where it says uh, Twitter, Tumblr, um, can you add like Facebook or anything else? One of the options is um, Facebook, uh, isn't it? So when we share something, there should be a Facebook there. I don't have that online. I just have oh, I do have my Facebook uh, business page, but not my personal. So the defaults should be that there is a share to Facebook because there is the parent company that owns it. And then when you advertise on Instagram, does it automatically do the same ad on Facebook? It's actually backwards. When you advertise on Facebook, it'll put the same ad on Instagram. Okay, and you, could, do you select that or is it just automatic? Well, at the moment that you're doing the ad or boosting your post on Facebook, it will then give you an option to then also send it to Instagram. Oh, so that's an option. Mm -hmm. I'm on the Facebook, Twitter, Twitter. Well, you know what? I see something a little different here. The plus sign at the bottom. Uh, let's you do photos, but it looks like the camera at the top left is slightly different. I just realized it. So the camera at the top left seems to have a lot more extra options. Clicking on that gives me, there's the part to do live broadcasting, normal photo, boomerang, so this would create a um, a looping animation, a rewinding, hands-free. So that camera up on the top left gives you even more options. And you can do the dog ears. Yes. There. <laughs> Normal. But can you make multiple videos on that? I think it's just one, and it's just for the 24-hour story. There. There is a way, um, yeah, it's going to be the 24-hour story. That's the spot where they want you to sort of add up all of these uh, features all together. So 
There we go. I'm sparkly. Oh, you're so pretty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty smart because maybe this one will work better. So, this is the new generation. I, I've seen these these jokes about like I don't even see you're not you don't have your dog filter today. What a terrible photo. <laughs> So that's how what our grandkids will say, Grandma, you didn't even have dog ears on your photo. What a terrible photo. So there's uh, all of this that could be done. Now I have this little lightning bolt here for flash. This camera doesn't have flash, but if I had a flash on this, um, I would turn that on and it would activate the, the flash on my device. So the only three things you can share this to are Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. You can't add on. Like, yeah, exactly. There used to be other ways to share, but they chose to take it away. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else? Live. Again, uh, turning on live will uh, let me go live, but um, I need to have something to say. Boomerang, etc. Now, I didn't plan this, but I've already gotten some notifications here. I've shared a few of these items, and the heart down here has a little dot, meaning some activity has happened in the meantime. So if I click that, it tells me that these four accounts so far have liked that post, most likely because of the hashtags. I put the hashtag writing and the hashtag how to. So in this case, Chris is, Chris is a in M Don and two is Elizabeth's and Kia Crystal and write out publishing. Most likely because of my hashtags, they saw this post and they liked it. I can click on each one of those to see who they are. So someone in Dublin, filmmaker. Uh, I guess it's in Welsh. That's why I couldn't, not Welsh, but Irish. That's why I couldn't read it. It's their photos and stuff. The point of this then, I got one like. I could go further and like their content, comment on their content, follow them, and maybe get what I want that back, which is follows to Elizabeth's grassroots short fiction and poetry publication. So definitely fill in that biography to explain to people what are you about and why should you follow me? And you have a spot there to add a link. Length of the link doesn't matter because it'll still be active. So they've got a haiku contest. Look at how they're using it. This is the kind of Instagram post that is definitely from an upload, which I'll show how to do in a moment. But this is a photo that has been prepared. It's got text on it. It's got a border. It's, it's an Instagram graphic that wasn't created instantly, most likely. Instagram does not let you add text like this, or fade out the background like that, or put a border. You can use other apps or other software. So also right here, uh, uh, Malik Arjuna Pandya also here. So because of that hashtag, it's getting some activity. If I go back to, to the regular share at the bottom, I have uh, gallery. So gallery is where I would load a photo that I took previously. So if I previously shot a photo, it would be listed here, and then I can display it. Let's say I took this photo some other day load it. And here's a spot also where I can select multiple, more than one photo. I have to have taken it, and then from the gallery I can select multiple. So I can show this one, and this one, and this one. And if you swipe right, I'm not sure if you know this, but it's like a new thing, um, you, it will pick up what you have saved in the past 24 hours? Well, it depends on the screen. I'm on the basic share screen. But when you go over to the, uh, I think if camera. you go to the regular camera, yep, you can, um, you can see it there in your last 24 hours. And then you can repost. Because I used to like post one thing on Instagram, one thing on Snapchat, one thing on Facebook for my videos. 
-hmm. And then I realized you can save that and just repost it. Mm -hmm. And that saved a lot of time. <laughs> Definitely, because to to figure out to, to do something brand new every day is a lot of effort. Yeah. So you can repost, reshare, repurpose what you've done on other networks, other days. So there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to share. It's kind of better to sort of have people try it and experiment with it and see what others have done because depending on your business a certain kind of post might work better. I took a photo of the desktop right here which is wide but the default is it's gonna crop it to a square. If I go to my gallery and choose to not crop it then it'll show the whole photo wide or tall. photos so uh, I don't have to crop it to a square I can choose that and I can then if I'm loading it from the gallery I can choose to zoom into a part of the screen so I might have taken a photo of the whole laptop but then I'm going to zoom into only the keyboard with the with the pinch and, and zoom effect I don't you have to switch it back to the sharing this way. I don't have it on there. Let's already is already cropped to that size, so that's ready to submit it. If you have photos that are wide or tall, then you would have that option. So the um, this screen also shows, here's a spot where I can do the boomerang looping, here's where I can do the collages. These, however, oftentimes, these are an extra app, a free download, but a separate app that it will then prompt you to download. If I want to make collages, I can click that and it'll say, don't forget to download the collage app, and then it'll tell you how to download it. Then you'll be able to use it. So, uh, I'm going to wind down the lecture in a few moments, about 10.45. Uh, I'll take general questions on what we looked at, but really the big thing is for you to check it out yourself. Try to click what does this do, see see what, see what kind of how it works for your purposes, but general questions on things we've, we've talked about today. Your own story, I didn't do one of those, but you know, when I'm at the top here on my home screen, I can click plus sign for you, for my business. And then that'll give me the option, basically, to do these different sorts of things. Create boomerangs, do the funny faces, and those will be visible for 24 hours. What's your favorite social media platform? For me, personally, my favorite one is Google+. And um, Instagram and Twitter are sort of tied for second. Uh, well, the one I want to get better at and learn more to use is Snapchat. I personally don't quite get Snapchat so much, especially for business. Mm -hmm. So I want to get up to speed better on that. And um, for business, I have to say the best one would be Facebook because of the audience, the built-in audience. But any of these networks will most likely work for any audience if you just take the time and effort. But I personally really like Google+. Just for personal, not so much for business? For or business works too, mm -hmm. but I have the most fun and connections and all of that personally on Google+. And for business, I like to use Twitter and, and Instagram more than Facebook, but I know that Facebook is the most powerful one to reach the audience. Yeah. 
So apparently the photo that I posted was so popular, I keep getting these pop-ups right here, and then my amazing photo was so great. So I've got some of them more right here. And then there's the, there's the colleague that's in my business. Of course, get your business partners to like your photos too. So uh, that was because of the hashtag, the writing hashtag. I didn't really plan really, really hard to find the perfect hashtag. Writing seemed to have been a hashtag that was working. I can see that because as I click to view my own content, you know, that, that's got the number of views, it's got the number of likes. We'll do one more thing, then we'll wrap up. I was going to say the website. You guys were going to let me forget. The one weird trick to uh, use Instagram on the web. Uh, I'm going to close my app for the moment. So I'm just going to turn off the, uh, the screen sharing. Let me show you this. We were we looked at the we looked at the uh, Instagram on the web, but here's the trick to to use Instagram on the web. I said that you would be able to like and all of that, but you couldn't post. There is a possible way to post on the web, and it's super secret. So take notes here. The only way you'll be able to do this, really, the easiest way is in Google Chrome. So let's try this. Open up Google Chrome and click Login. Go to Instagram and go to Login, but in Google Chrome, not Safari, not uh, Internet Explorer, whatever. I'm going to sign in with the account I had just opened on the device a moment ago. I'll write down these steps also in the notes in a moment, but basically step one in Google Chrome. So this is secret way to use Instagram on the web. And a web browser, <coughs> laptop or desktop. Using Google Chrome Log into Instagram.com. When you log in on the keyboard, press F12 or right click and select uh, Inspect. Right click and select Inspect. Or press F12 on the keyboard. This will open up a special developers panel showing you all of this secret code. But this will also show you a way, this will give you a way to pretend like you're on a mobile device. Sometimes web developers, we need to test a website that looks good on a laptop and on a mobile device. And I can't test it on a real mobile device, so I can test it in a sort of simulator. The simulator is in Google Chrome by pressing F12. You can turn that on or off with F12. Do you, do you hit enter before, after you type in your login and your password? Do you yes. hit enter and then you hit F12? You, d you have to sign in, yes. So you put, in your, put in your name oh. and your password and log in. You can press enter, log in. Once you've logged in, then you want to press F12. So when, I, when we press F12, we get the side panel. There's an icon right here. There's a bunch of words, element, console, etc. And there's an icon, toggle device toolbar. This is what will activate like a mobile device simulator. So on the top bar, click toggle device toolbar. Just one moment, let me write this down. On the top bar, click on Toggle Device Toolbar. So in the top over here, you're going to see all these. So let's go ahead and click Toggle Device Toolbar. What then happens on the left side, the screen will shrink a little bit like a mobile device. 
And then at the top here, it'll say responsive. Lastly, we click on a device. Pretend that I'm on an iPhone. Pretend that I'm on an Android Nexus, iPhone 6. So if I click on that, the website of Instagram will think I'm on a mobile device, iPhone, and look at that, I have the icon to share a photo. If I'm not in this mode, if I turn off device toolbar, I stop F12, there is no button anywhere for me to upload a photo. All I can do is view people's photos, like their photo, comment, I don't see any button anywhere to post a photo. With F12 and the device toggle and activating a device, I'm tricking the website into thinking, I'm on an iPhone. I can click to upload a photo. <laughs> the downside is you can't choose filters. You can't do the 24-hour story thing. You can't do boomerang, right? You can't do all those extra special things. But I can upload a photo. Maybe I know Photoshop, and I prepare a photo in Photoshop. And I do this trick, and I click here, and I'm going to be able to load a photo from my... From my, from my pictures right here. I'm going to upload this, this koala photo. So right here it's going to think that I'm going to upload to a uh, from a mobile device. Question? Yeah, I got it here. I got it. Uh, well, you got it at the time. So uh, that was uploading. I can click that, and then I can choose to upload a new photo. Mm -hmm. So all of this extra stuff over here, you can ignore all of that. Don't worry about that. That's like developer code and all of that. Don't worry about that. But once you've activated this uh, device preview, let's say I choose, I don't know, Galaxy S5. Um, it shows me that new option to be able to, to post. So completing the notes here at the top bar, click on Toggle Device Toolbar. On the left side, at top, switch between responsive to any other mobile device simulator. iPhone 6 or Nexus 5. Most likely, but, you know, Twitter, you can use Twitter completely from the from the laptop. Google+, Plus, Facebook, you can use all of them completely from the desktop. The only one is Instagram. Instagram was use our app on your device. This little secret here confuses it or tricks it into thinking you're on a mobile device. So it gives us the option. Get a yeah, if I've got all my photos on my computer instead of my phone, I can load it here. So there's not much I can do here. I chose that photo. I don't see options for filters and such, really. Yeah. So let's say I'm going to use that photo. I'll do next. And it's just there. Write your caption. It doesn't let me choose. Send it also to Facebook. It doesn't let me choose location. It doesn't let me choose filters. It is limited. But if you set your photo up in, 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 in Photoshop, it's a great photo. So it should be a... JPEG or PNG? Uh, that's a good point. I think either or. I think it can be pings. Let me see if I can. JPEGs are commonly uh, photos. I'm trying. Device. That's all I have to draw. Yeah. Compression or quality and all of that. 
it doesn't look like it lets me uh, load PNGs. There is a PNG in this folder, the Koala, but it's only letting me JPGs, JPGs. So that's the last thing we have to wrap up on. It's uh, much later than I wanted it to be. So I'm going to put these notes in the network folder. The, the notes on how to do this trick is going to be in the network folder right there at the very end. Uh, last note to say here, uh, now you have the option to uh, upload photos from your computer, but you can't filter them or do much editing. Yeah. You have to have already prepared the photo, like in Photoshop. Um, the time is very short. Let me turn on the, the printer, and if it comes out by the time we need to do this, it'll come out. If it doesn't, you'll have to get it next time.